Hi, welcome to the 3 minute lesson on sickle cell disease. At the end, you should be able to explain the defect and biochemical basis of symptoms in sickle cell disease. Hemoglobin molecule is made up of four globin chains and each of it contains a heme. Different hemoglobins are produced from fetal through adult life and they differ based on the chain composition. The major adult hemoglobin is called HbA and is made up of two alpha and two beta subunits. The alpha chain is common to several types of hemoglobin. If instead of beta chain, the hemoglobin contains a delta chain, it is called as HbA2 and if the chain is gamma, it is referred to as HbF. Hemoglobinopathies refer to variants of hemoglobin which give rise to a disease state. The major types are structural hemoglobinopathies and thalassemia syndromes. Hemoglobinopathies are prevalent in Africa and Southeast Asia and the commonest are sickle cell disease and thalassemia. We will cover sickle cell disease in this session and thalassemia in the next one. Structural hemoglobinopathies occur due to mutations that change the amino acid sequence of the globin chain. This may lead to production of an abnormal chain. A common example of structural hemoglobinopathy is sickle cell disease. In sickle cell disease, the hydrophilic amino acid glutamate is replaced by the hydrophobic amino acid valin at the 6th position of beta chain on hemoglobin. This produces an abnormal hemoglobin called sickle cell hemoglobin or HBS. The abnormality in HBS is that it exposes a sticky patch on the surface during hypoxic conditions. This patch can bind with a nearby hemoglobin molecule and thus aggregate and polymerize with each other. The polymerization of deoxygenated HPS forms insoluble rigid fibers that can distort and damage the red cell. The clinical features occur because the deformed and distorted red cells fail to navigate through small blood vessels and get trapped. This in turn occludes the blood vessel blocking the circulation. The clinical manifestations are pain in abdomen, fingers and bones due to involvement of blood vessels in the respective areas. The acute attacks are called sickling crisis and are precipitated by conditions that lead to hypoxia. There is also hemolytic anemia due to entrapment of red cells in the spleen. The principle of management is to identify and avoid conditions that precipitate an attack. Acute attacks are managed supportively. Management of anemia may require repeated blood transfusions. That brings us to the end. Thanks for watching.